Well, hey everybody, let's talk about age. People come to me and say, you know, doc, I'm getting old. That's why I'm falling apart. And I go, well, how old are you? And it turns out they're younger than I am. And I go, I don't have any of those problems. It can't be age. So what is age? And everyone goes, oh, you know, life expectancy is this. So I, I'm just gonna live to be this long. And I think all of that is wrong. I think we have the wrong definition of health. We have the wrong definition of age. And we absolutely don't understand what life expectancy is all about. Let me give you some stats and numbers. My father was born in 1923. It's now 2023. So if he was alive today, he'd be 100 years old. When he was born, life expectancy was 57.4 years. Dad lived to be 88. So why did he live 88 years old when life expectancy was only 57? I'll give you some other numbers. 1706, that's when Benjamin Franklin was born. Life expectancy was literally around 35 years. That's, that's how long they thought people lived. But Benjamin Franklin lived to be 84 years old. Why did he live so long? I bet you there were other people who lived to 84. Pablo Picasso was born in 1881 he lived to be 91 years old when he was born life expectancy was between 40 and 45 years Nelson Mandela he was born around the same time as my dad 1918 he lived to be 95 years old Mahatma Gandhi lived to be 78 years old and he was born in 1869 when Mahatma Gandhi was born life expectancy was between 40 and 45 so he nearly doubled his life expectancy Michelangelo born in 1475 lived to be 88 years old when he was born Life expectancy was 30. So why is it that people are outliving their life expectancy? I think that number is wrong. I think we're looking at an absolute wrong number. Do you guys know how life expectancy is calculated? They write down the age of everybody who died, they average them. So let's say in the country of United States, there are only two human beings. One of them died at the age of one. The other died at the age of 99. How you take the life expectancy is you would add the one to the 99 and you divide by two because there were two people. So one plus 99 is 100 divided by two is 50. So based on the calculations, life expectancy would only be 50. But wait a minute, one of them lived to be 99. The other one died at age one. 50 is not an accurate number for life expectancy. I truly believe that there's a class system happening here where you've got the ultra healthy who are gonna live to be over 100 in our era. And then there's a, there's a class of people who are low health and they are the ones that are getting poor medical attention. They are the ones that are gonna be having old age diseases in their 30s, having heart attacks and dying in their 30s. And the middle class is shrinking. See, it's kind of like an economic system. You know, we got the upper class, middle class, lower class, but we're talking about health and that's what's happening today. And there are gonna be people who are living way past 100. That's why overall average life expectancy has been declining. Why is it declining? Because young people are getting sick and dying. Young people are suffering from old age disease and that's preventable. The reason life expectancy in the 1700s was only 35 is because a lot of babies would die of infections. Because in the 1700s, nobody washed their hands. They didn't even have soap. They didn't know what the word germ meant. They didn't know what bacteria was. They had never heard of a virus. I think I saw a stat in the 1840s, 20% of newborns would die of infections. That's not the case today. It's a lot less. Why? Well, because we have antibiotics and so on. So is it that we're living longer or is it because we learned how to keep babies alive? And I think it's the latter. And so what's the true definition of age? How long are you gonna live? I don't know, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how long you live. What matters is how well you live. Let's say someone gets chronically ill at the age of 60 and they still live to be 90. Did we just prolong their life or did we prolong their death? You know, we can strap people to machines and wires and keep them alive but that's not life. True definition of age is the number of years of quality, enjoyable life that you have remaining. That's your true age. It's a number you don't know. No one knows. What I do know is that you can add years to your life. How do we do that? Lifestyle. You get healthy. You stay healthy. You take care of yourself. You protect your health. You eat right. You exercise. You think right. You do fun things. You enjoy yourself. You have great relationships. You will live longer. You will live longer better because it's more important how you live than how long you live. You should be living a life that's not only productive and enjoyable, but it also contributes. Are you contributing to your society, to your family? Stop worrying about how old you are. Start worrying about how long you have left. And not only that, not how many years of life you have left, but how many years of productive life you have left. That's what's important. That is, for the most part, under your control. But I know I'm doing what's possible to make sure that I prolong my life. Now, can I guarantee I'll never get sick? Absolutely not. I know plenty of people who overcame cancer, 
who overcame heart disease, who had lots of issues, health issues, they overcame them. And the reason they overcame them wasn't because they were lucky. It was because until the moment they got sick, they were living a better life. See, if someone's living a poor quality life, meaning unhealthy habits and behaviors, you know what they are, smoking, drinking, drugs, gambling, things that affect your health, all of those will make you age faster. And when it does those people, when they get sick, the odds of recovering from that illness is lower than someone who's been exercising, eating right, for the most part. I'm not saying you need to be perfect. What if that's all you did? But you avoided all the other stuff too that weigh you down and stress your nervous system and make you sick. And then all of a sudden, I get struck with cancer. I promise you. If I've been living my life correctly up to that moment, I'm gonna survive better. There was a doctor, Russ Reese, he was a cardiothoracic surgeon. He said, if you live long enough, you're gonna be faced with a challenge. Whether it's a disease or an injury, you're gonna be faced with a challenge. How you come out of that challenge is determined by how well you've been living your life up to that moment. And I think it's true. See, one of these days, we're all gonna be faced with a challenge. We're gonna step into a ring, there's gonna be an opponent, that opponent may be bigger than us, stronger than us, faster than us. And you go, oh my gosh, this is like David and Goliath. I am facing cancer, I have no shot. But guess what? If I've been training, if I've been preparing for fight day, and then that day comes, I have a way better chance of surviving, and I will live longer, and I will enjoy that life. Let's keep that in mind. Stop looking at life expectancies. Stop looking at your age and how old you are and how long you got left or any of that stuff. Live for today. Make today your best day. Every day, do something that makes you better and contributes to your world, whatever that is. Be happy, be positive, and let's see what happens. Let's see how long we live. I hope that's helpful. Take care.